So Shivani got introduced uh, through Prajekta. Uh, she is uh, as a practicing architect, so that is what is interesting. She is a practicing architect, and as architects, uh, they all take it like civil engineering plus art. <laughs> <laughs> That's what they define. So as she has to deal with public spaces, uh, design of public spaces and um, buildings uh, where people interact. So uh, till now, like people look at in, in civil engineering kind of aspect, it is only like how you make buildings, play with the concretes or the bricks and things like that. So Shivani brings the concept that what people do there is also equally important. So that that uh, space which is there is also influenced by the actions of people. So to be frank, it was a very good learning for me also from Shivani last time when I saw because when I used to see these modern dramas, especially from European places, it folk, I used to struggle to get any meaning out of it. Most few people will come to the stage, even talk some actions. So you don't get any clue about that. So actually after Shivani's session, I started getting a a small feel of it, you know, as of what she was trying to convey. So she's a practicing architect and she's an artist also. So she stands in between, I think, art and engineering, or maybe she's trying to pull both these things together. More, more about her, I think Shivani herself uh, has yeah. to share. No, definitely. I think that's a good question because um, I don't know what the students here are like, you know, if you're kind of interested towards like the buildings that you see and how designs happen, but just generally, I would like to share a little bit of how I see the connection. So we are obviously all of us are sitting in certain spaces right now. So we're in certain rooms and there are all these like objects that surround us and, you know, there's spaces that we inhabit or we're always kind of living in. And um, there's a performance that happens, you know, that could be like, you know, I get up and I kind of shut the door, but they, you know, they're always moving. So any space that we are in, there are always human bodies that are doing something in it. And sometimes the bodies kind of change the spaces, the spaces get changed by the body, but there's a constant interaction that happens. Now all of this might go like over your head and this might be too much, but hopefully as we keep doing, just don't try to think too much, just enjoy yourself um, in the next few minutes. And maybe, uh, you know, through the course, we will pause every now and then and talk and see if there are any parallels that you can draw between architecture and performance and like, why am I doing this, uh, you know? So it might be better if maybe we don't speak and Satish, if that's okay, maybe towards the end, we can come back to this question yeah, and yeah. talk more about it. So, uh, so that like, yeah, just want to free all, don't uh, think too much, just enjoy uh, whatever instructions are being given and um, there is no right and wrong to anything that we are doing in the next two hours and just generally in life also so whatever you um, uh, however you feel like responding to uh, my provocations or invitations so whatever I'm going to say is a suggestion and you can interpret it in your own way okay okay so we'll just start with some warm-ups and um, it's okay if, like uh, if you don't have too much space whatever space you have around you it's enough okay so uh, if everybody is okay, they can just stand up. Okay, so just uh, follow me. We just start with very basic uh, um, warm ups. Okay, just to kind of loosen our bodies. And uh, yeah, just try to enjoy this. So just follow me. I'll try to scream if you can't hear me, but hopefully you'll be able to hear me. Okay. Um... So, uh, straight and uh, try to do this, this, this movement as much as you can. Yeah, nice. Keep going to the right. Yes, good. Let's do the other way around now. Okay, fantastic. That's good. Now we just pull our hands in and out. Okay. Yes. Good. Okay. And now we just do like a swing of the arms. So maybe, you know, four rounds on each side. And then the other way around. Okay. Nice. Great. Um, let's do the other one. Nice. Okay, fantastic. Now let's do some, like, let's loosen the neck. Okay, so what we're going to do is just try to bend your neck on either side three times. Nice, nice stretch. Okay, and let's just do a quick rotation.
ओके ठीक है ग्रेट सो लेट्स जस्ट डू लाइक अ लिटिल बिट ऑफ रिस्ट वेस्ट मूवमेंट नाउ जस्ट रोटेट योर वेस्ट okay fantastic and uh, we just do some leg kicking so um, yeah just try to kick throw okay so it should be like a sharp throw let's do it Okay, and done enough of it. You can just um, just hold your leg at the back and fold it like this, so it gets a stretch in the other direction. Yeah. Okay, great. Um, okay, and when you're done with this, uh, let's just do some uh, ankle rotation. Okay, so you know I'm, I'm just going to try to show it to you in the camera, but. Um, Basically, like this. Great. Okay, and we just do one quick, like a whole body kind of um, movement. So just follow me. Uh, Back of your head, pull it down behind your back. Okay, so your hand should be like this, and then slowly move down. Okay, wash your hand on your whole feet, and then bring it up from the top. Okay, drop your hand, drop your hand. Do this. Okay, and then put your hand behind again. And then let's do it again. Okay, so we just push everything down to the ground. Then slowly we bring it up again, slowly. And then we cross our hand, cross our hand, take it to the shoulder, and then pull it back again. Okay. So it's basically. Okay. So keep going. Keep doing it. Keep doing it. One a couple of more rounds. So start with your head. Move. Yeah. Move it back. slowly wash it down okay yes full body yeah keep keep going down touch it to your feet turn it in front yes bring it up cross your hand put it back again yeah keep going on it give it a nice wash okay just see as your where your hand is moving see how there's like movement inside yeah okay Let's do one more round. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Fantastic. So, um, when you all are ready, um, let's just come back to our chairs and sit down for a bit. so what i'm going to ask you all to do now is um just try to close your eyes okay and just visualize where your uh, belly button is okay so just close your eyes it's okay nobody is like um, looking at the cameras yeah so just close your eyes um try to imagine where your belly belly button is so try to see it with your eyes closed and okay if once you've identified that point just slowly move that point inwards okay as if it's in the center of your body okay so i'm basically between my belly button and my spinal cord there is one point that point right now is the center of gravity of your body that means that all the weight of your body okay is kind of concentrated there right now theek hai so just be with that point just notice that this point right now is in this space that room that you are in wherever all the fuss are this one point is there in that room okay now slowly 
try to move that point up okay and as you do that try to see if you can get up from your chair so you're getting up from your chair but by moving that point up okay don't push your feet to the ground which is what we usually do try to move up by moving that point up slowly and slowly stand up Okay, now that you've stood up, you still have that point in the center of your body, same place, okay? So again, if you've missed it, just relocate it between your belly button and the spinal cord. There's one center point that is the center of gravity of your body right now, okay? Where you're standing in this room. So close your eyes and see that point again and see that point as one point in the whole room that you are in right now, okay? Okay, fantastic. So we have this point. Now, what we're going to do is slowly, we're going to try to move this point in space, which means we're going to try to walk around the room. But how am I walking around? I'm moving the point. Don't move your body. I'm moving the point and the body parts are automatically getting pulled by it. Okay. Let's try to slowly move around your room. You can open your eyes right now so that you don't hit anything. So it's okay, you can open your eyes, but still be aware of that point and try to move that point rather than your whole body, okay? We'll do this for a few minutes. See how that point is interacting with the room that you are in, okay? So you're moving the point, but you're moving it in this room. So either you're moving it forward, you're moving it very slowly, okay? You're very slowly moving this point in the center of your body. And when you're moving it in this room, your body is also moving with it. Now, whatever speed you're walking at, just make it one point faster, okay? So, we'll just make it a little faster than what speed we are at right now. So, what we were doing initially was zero, okay? Level zero. Now, we're walking at level one, slightly faster than that. Okay, still aware of that point? We're still aware of that point? Okay. Okay, um, now we'll move it even faster. So we go to level two. Okay, so from zero, we went to one. Now let's go to two. It should be in the same proportion. Huh? So jitna zero se one pe hum gaye te, one se two utna hi ho sakta. You can't make it very fast. Okay, good. Let's come back to zero again. Okay, still aware of the, still aware of the point. Okay. Now come in front of the uh, screen of the computer huh. and let's release off that point. Okay. So let's just forget about it. And now just try to walk. No, 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 don't sit, don't sit, don't sit, don't sit. Keep walking. But this time you're just walking as if you were walking in the room without thinking about the point and just see how this feels. Okay. So just notice how this moment is feeling. So there's no, um, we're not thinking about the point anymore. We're just walking in the room and see how, how what is, the, how, how do you feel? What is this movement like? What is the weight of your body that you're feeling? Just, just, just try to become aware of your movement right now.
okay now go back to the awareness of the point and move again yeah go back to the point and move with the point like the knowledge of that point Okay, great. So whenever you're ready, just let's come back. Yeah. So now, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to do some more movement, but this time we're going to do it with certain instructions. Okay. So the first instruction is that we're going to do very direct movements. What does this mean? This means that say if I was moving, okay, like let's let's see an example of a direct movement and non-direct movement. Okay. So direct movement is I'm walking. I've decided I want to walk from one point to another point in this room, and I'm moving directly. Okay, this is direct movement. This is direct movement. Okay, but indirect movement. Can anybody show me what an indirect movement would be? What would be an indirect movement between one point and another? How do I indirectly get? Yeah, Avinash is doing like a hand uh, movement. Yeah, that's right. So you can like you know you can go like this to a point. So I'm I'm not I'm going to get from point one to point two. but uh, i i i can't do it directly okay so let's try that so let's first do a directional movement okay from one point to another in your room okay now let's make it indirect okay so whatever you were doing directly let's do it indirectly make it as indirect as possible okay so this movement has to be the most indirect movement you can do okay super indirect you still have to get from point a to point b but you have to do it indirectly Okay, think about all your body parts. Okay, it's not necessary that you have to only always walk vertically, right? You can you can like bend. There are so many joints in your body, so just explore different possibilities of being indirect. What are the other ways in which you can be indirect? There are so many joints in your body, in your neck, in your knees, in your hands, fingers. Just explore all the possibilities of being indirect that you know your body allows you to do. Yeah, good. you can be more indirect this is all of you all can be more indirect okay let's go back to being directional again okay so now we want to go from point a to point b very direct very very direct so the most direct way to do this movement Okay, great. Now what we're going to do is, however you're moving right now, whatever your movement is, okay, just see the weight of that movement. Keep moving, keep moving, keep moving, and see what is the weight. Is it a light movement or is it a heavy movement? Okay, whatever your weight right now of the movement is, I want you to make it very, very light. Make it extremely light. Okay, make your current walk as light as you can. see what all you have to release in your body to get this lightness just try to enjoy being like a feather okay so you have to be in this space as if you were a very very light uh, thing okay just enjoy being extremely light in this room notice what all is changing in this room as you're becoming light what is the room becoming now you're very lightly present in the room Okay. 
now slowly we'll make this very light movement strong okay so let's give it weight what how can you give it weight as much as weight as you can use all the possibilities to make this movement very very heavy okay as heavy as you can and just try to enjoy the heaviness that you're putting into this room right now okay so you're making this you're giving a very heavy movement to this space that you are in this room that you are in and just make it as heavy as you can what is happening to the walls when you're becoming heavy do you feel like they're also becoming heavy or something is changing or what is the color of heaviness you know what, what is heavy let's see how heavy can your body become right now which parts of your body are bending to get the heaviness is it your trunk that is that is bending is it your knees is it your spine how how can i become heavier and where is the weight is it in the feet is it in your hands that is just going down because it's so heavy is it an upward movement is it a downward movement how do i become heavy okay we go back to becoming light again okay so let's go back to becoming very very light okay theek okay. hai now we're going to do sudden movements okay so whatever you're moving let's make it very sudden what does it mean it means it just happens okay it you can't you can't have like slow and continuous you have to have sudden let's make your movement very very sudden can we try to do that okay sudden movements come on very very sudden like you know i should this should be with lots of jerks yeah do as much of sudden movements that you can in this room just explore it did not even mean walking you know you could just stand in one place and want to just like do like sharp throws or anything completely up to you what sudden means to you but let's just be as sudden as we can in this room right now very sudden and from the sudden we're going to slowly move to sustained which means it is not sudden it is slowly continuously happening it is sustained it is continuous it's not sudden anymore let's make your last sudden movement now continuous okay so let's make your movement continuous instead of being sudden Okay let's go back to being sudden very sudden movements See which parts of your body are getting the pressure is it your is it your shoulders is it your knees which joints which joints are getting the 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 impact of the suddenness that you're doing right now just just notice your body and enjoy enjoy what is happening inside your body as you're doing the sudden thing just try to enjoy it okay fantastic now what we'll do is we'll make this sudden movement very light okay so we're going to be sudden but we're also going to be light can we do sudden and light together yeah okay notice if you're walking in one direction and you want to change the direction okay try to explore different parts of the room we don't want to get too stuck okay so explore different parts of this room that you are in see if you want to change your direction of sudden and light 
Okay. Now let's make the sudden movement very strong. So we are going to give weight to the suddenness. Okay. What is happening now? When the sudden is becoming strong, what happens? What is happening to the speed? What is happening to your knees, to your shoulders? Just keep watching yourself. What is happening to the room? Okay, fantastic. Now we'll take, we'll take the strong, but we'll make the strong indirect. Okay, let's just keep to the strong and indirect. Can anybody try to think of what a strong and indirect movement looks like? It's strong, but it's also very indirect. Let's do a strong and indirect movement. It's strong and it's indirect. It's heavy, but it's not directional at all. There's no direction in it. Okay, now let's be indirect, okay, and also make it a free movement, okay, so it's this complete freedom, so just imagine as if, you know, there were no bones in your body, there were no bones in your body and you were just free, okay, so now you're free, no bones in your body, and we're doing this indirect movement, so it's indirect and free, just, just explore what that could be, okay, just explore it, just see what, what answers you get, everything is right, whatever this means, okay, so it's indirect and it's free, together. Okay, so we're now going to do something that we call like a dreamlike state. Okay, so say your body was in a dreamlike state. So I want you to Pay attention to the weight of your body right now, okay? And at the same time, be in a flow. So you can choose whether you want to keep the weight heavy or light, but just be in a flow. So this is this is what we call like a dreamlike, it's a dreamlike state in movement, okay? So your body's in a dreamlike state. Just try to embody what a dreamlike state feels like, okay? So you're looking at the weight and the flow and just be in that, that state, okay? So just release your body, allow it to be in flow. And as you, be, as you are in flow, just pay attention to the weight. Of how much weight are you putting on the ground? Okay. Okay, great. Uh, whenever you feel you're ready, we can just come back to the screen. Okay. And um, yeah, I mean, anybody wants to share the reflections? How did that feel? Which, which one did you enjoy doing the most? Which one was more something that you enjoy of all the different states? So how did it feel bet moving between one and the other? Anybody wants to share any thoughts? No, I love the indirect and free one. Like mm -hmm. we could ex go on, like moving, moving freely, right? Uh, I haven't done this any before. Like we are always sitting in a confined space doing something now. It feels so good, like when more freely without caring anything. So I love that state. Mm, yeah, that's actually a very good point because um, quite often in our rooms, depending on where the furniture is located, we always move between like, one point to another so we go to the bathroom door then we go to the kitchen we are we are always moving based on uh, whatever the um, you know intention of the space is so like from point a to point b nobody was going to do that to go from like you know the bathroom door to the, this thing but but it is no but what i'm saying is that it is uh, it's a very good observation to see how we use spaces okay so like how how, how do we in everyday life whenever you're in this room like you said you've never done something like that but you've been using this room i'm guessing for some time and whenever you are in that, you're always moving. So once you get conscious of your movement, you can 
learn a lot more about this space that you are in okay or even noticing other people's movements like you know is it heavy movement is it a light movement is it sustained and certain spaces ask you to move in a certain way like there are places where you have to be sudden you know they don't allow you to not be like sometimes like malls for example like market spaces you know they're like they're like move, uh, spaces of sudden movement where you know you have to kind of be quick otherwise because there's so many people and everybody has time uh, you know there's this kind of there are other spaces where suddenly you'll realize that oh they they require to be sustained they always have to be continuous you can't be sudden in certain other kind of spaces so can anybody think of other spaces where you feel like you know in your everyday life you've noticed a sudden sudden movement like everybody mostly everybody is kind of continuous they can't be very sudden any getting into a bus uh, like very crowded bus when i was going to school like experiencing this every day you have to run for the bus like it will get filled very fast so mm. run to my point to the bus yeah that's a very good example anybody else noticed any sustained movement in their everyday life or sudden movement or any place where i thought people always heavy moving moving very heavily while playing yeah that's true because even when i think when you're playing there's like a intention that you want to get 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 the ball to that point so everything is very directional you know you're kind of like moving with the direction in mind okay any other kind of indirect movement that you feel people do does anybody do indirect movement yeah or like when you're sitting on the zoom zoom is very directional right your body is always facing the screen you're paying attention it's very very directional right nobody looks like that or or do we do like indirect movement for the zoom no it's like you know the the screen is kind of telling you what is the direction in which you have to orient your body so any okay anybody any other suggestions or um, sorry like thoughts as you were doing this anybody enjoyed something else more ayati in the bathroom hmm like what which which movement do you do in the bathroom actually when we uh, like go to pick up the uh, so when when we sometimes dance in the bathroom hmm yeah that's very beautiful so do uh, you think that's a slow movement or that's indirect oh yeah it's indirect you're right absolutely yeah because you are um, Yeah, that's very beautiful. Thanks, Ayati. So when we apply soap on our body, we we move. Fantastic! Yeah, that's so good. Hundred percent. Applying soap on your body is super indirect. Amazing. Wow. Thank you, Ayati. So this pressure on pen. Ah, uh, wow. That's also very beautiful. Um, who's this? Pressure, Elisa. Pressure on pen and paper while writing something. Hmm. Do you think that's indirect, Elisa, or direct? Ah, uh, no. I think it's both, kind of direct and indirect also. Hmm. Yeah. Hundred percent. Okay. Anybody else wants to share? Like also, just generally, uh, somebody said they enjoyed the slow movement very much, and they found it very, um. being light was so relaxing that's very nice so whenever you want to relax anamika you know what you can do just get up and walk very lightly and it can be very relaxing um walking uh, slowly was the best labano okay and there's one more message light and continuous okay so you enjoy that walking upstairs what what is that mega uh direct hmm okay that's that's definitely nice and does um anybody how many of you all enjoy this third speed more how many enjoy like the fastest more you want to just like raise your hand walking to school that's direct or indirect or like like sustained or light or heavy huh? sustained heavy thing yeah I think the heaviness is mainly because of my backpack. <laughs> okay, yeah, good. Um, yes, that makes sense. Yeah, I mean, all the objects that we carry, they transfer the weight to our bodies, and then it all reflects together. Yeah, for sure. Okay. Wow! Thank you for sharing all of those uh, amazing kind of connections. I like the heavy movement. I was able to understand, recognize my e joint, the body part. That's amazing, Kathy. Um. That's very nice. Yeah. 
So when uh, Angshu, um, when you're walking with your very heavy, <laughs> yeah, Satish, uh, yes, that's also a very good point. Um, indirect for friends and direct for parents and teachers. Yes, I mean, um, depending on who you are addressing, quite often our movements change, which could be fun to notice, you know, like maybe after this thing, just notice everybody you see in your lives and see whether, what kind of like, what is the weight, what is the speed, how are they orienting? Is it because of the space, because of the people? Do they like the people? They don't like the people and they change the way they move. But it's, it's a fun exercise to notice because it's all connected to how spaces are also kind of, you know, uh, changing them or like when you go to a restaurant see how people move and then go to a mall and then see in your house so obviously this kind of small small weight based changes are very nice to notice um okay and um yeah Anksha, i was going to tell you that if um like if the weight is very uh, is a lot i think somebody in the chat was just saying that um uh, I like the uh, heavy movement. Yeah, Kathy was saying because it helps recognize all the body parts. Maybe next time when you're walking very heavily, you can also pay attention to which parts of your body are becoming heavy. And if you maybe start to enjoy that noticing, walking to Seoul is in, yeah, and light movements are peaceful. No, the road is curved here and there. <laughs> yes, the road also matters. Yeah. The roads matter, and plus, there are so many people who are going to school that if I don't curve a landing to 20,000 people or something, yeah, that's true. Okay, so that's a good thing to notice that other people's movement and speed they affect our movement and speed, right? So, I can't be walking very slow in a place where people are running. So usually there is like a collective speed in any place. So you can always notice what is the collective speed. Like if you go to the beach, there's a collective speed that everybody has averaged out to each other so they can actually be in the space and not hit each other over. So those kind of like collective speeds are also important to notice. So yeah, fantastic. Great. Okay. So we're going to now move to the next part. Uh, where now that you have kind of like freed your body and you can see, your, you know, you, you, you can see what are the possibilities, okay? Your body can do so many different movements and actions and things. So we're going to be freed it up and we're going to the first part. So now um, I'm just going to share with you a little thing that everything that we see around us, right now we're talking about very direct movement, but even if like, say I showed you a rock, okay? This rock has a certain rhythm to it. Okay, might not make sense. What am I saying? But we're just going to try to just go with me. Okay. And then we we'll see how maybe what I'm saying is very stupid as well, but we'll just try it. Okay. So I'm going to show you a picture. It's a painting by an artist. Okay. And what we're going to do is just look at the picture and try to embody the rhythm in that picture. Okay. So there's a rhythm in everything. There's a rhythm in, um, um, I don't know, there's a rhythm in like colors. Um, there's a rhythm in sound, there's a rhythm in like forms, there's a rhythm in everything, okay? And rhythm is much more bigger than just music, okay? So this is your first prompt, okay? So just try to look at it and uh, try to embody the rhythm in that painting, okay? Whatever it makes you feel, however it makes you move, just like go with it, okay? So we start now. Say if this was a movement, okay? What would it be? If that's a movement of this painting, what would it be? Is it sharp? Is it heavy? Is it light? Is it sustained? Is it slow? Is it very fast? How is it sitting in your room? Does it have, does this painting occupy the whole of your room? Like the feeling of this painting? How does it make you feel inside? Just go with whatever the feeling inside is and just try to show it on your body. So what we say is we're embodying this painting, okay? So if this painting had to become a part of your body, what would your body be? It could be anything. It could like, it could go out, come in. But for that, you need to stand up and just explore, okay? So the minute you start moving, just keep looking at it and moving. And whatever you get is the right thing. There's no right or wrong. But just try to keep moving. As you're looking at this painting, just try to move with this painting and become this painting, okay? We're going to slowly try to become this painting. What is this painting? Let's try to become it. How's it making you feel? How are the colors? When you see it, how do you feel inside and how do you, how do, how do you become this painting? Okay. 
Now try to explore this painting only as a color, okay? So you say if you just want to perform the color red, how would you do the color red? Okay, I want all of you all to become red. What does red mean to you? Just, just become red. Embody everything that it means to be red right now. And as you're being red, which is the heaviest, where do you feel the tension in your body is? Which part of your body is becoming tense as you're red right now? Okay, so become fully red. Okay, embody, embody what red means to you. What does it remind you of? How does red feel to you? And just try to see what is, what is happening in your body. Where is all the tension? Is it in your feet? Is it in your ankle, your hands, your face, your neck? There's a tension when you do red. Okay. Now we're going to turn the red into a pink. So let's become pink. Okay. We're going to embody the feeling of the color pink. How does pink feel? How does pink move? Is it a flowy movement? Is it a sharp movement? Is it slow? Is it fast? What is pink? Let us all embody what it means to be pink. And now let's move the pink into a yellow. Okay, so we're all going to embody yellow right now. Yellow. Yeah. So what is what is yellow becoming? What is what? How do we become yellow? Whatever the movement of yellow is, what is the movement of yellow? How does it make you feel? Is it fast and slow? What is the movement of yellow? Is it more static? Is it moving a lot? Is it like moving too fast and more held together? What does yellow mean to you? Okay, now we're going to come back to this painting and look at the yellow in this particular painting, okay? So, so you see the yellow in this, now we're going to become this yellow. So we're going to move from that yellow that we thought in our head to this particular yellow. And let's try to become this yellow now of this painting, okay? So what is the movement of this yellow in this painting? Okay, and now uh, we're going to move to becoming the yellow of this painting, okay? So we're doing still a yellow, but it's a yellow of this painting. Just see how does the yellow change in your new movement. Okay, so now we're going to change our yellow slightly so it becomes like this yellow. So now we're looking at this particular yellow which in all our computer screens is looking a particular shade. And we're trying to become this yellow. How is this yellow different from the previous yellow that we just did? Okay. And as you're doing the yellow, just try to move to the whole painting, okay? So the whole painting has a certain composition, certain item in it. And let's move from that yellow to the whole painting. Okay, so can we embody this painting right now? How do we embody this painting? What do we become? I want you to become this painting, whatever this painting means to you, let's just become it. Okay. Did anybody enjoy this? 
what did you enjoy which which one did you enjoy the most which what did you enjoy doing anything like new you noticed in the painting anybody has seen these paintings before oh, okay angshu is raising his hand he's seen uh, nodding his head so he's seen it was it, it was one of the paintings that was shown in the visual art class Oh, okay, fantastic! So you know this painting. Okay, so did anybody notice anything new today that they hadn't noticed uh, before? Um, last time when you saw it in visual art class, and today as you were like becoming the painting, did anybody notice anything new? It was a little dull, like mm-hmm. a heavy tone. Okay, and how did it feel becoming dull? Like what happened to your body? What 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 did you do when you it became dull? Can you show us? Was Heavy and continuous, very slow. Okay, let's not do words. You want to just show it to us. We would all like to see again. Yeah. So, okay. So this is a sunflower painting movement. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Did anybody have a very different reaction to the sunflower painting than Angshu? You all saw his movement. Anybody did something that was different, very different from that? Shri Lakshmi, Shri Lakshmi, sorry. Do you want to show us what you did for the it's sunflower? The yeah, I just felt that dullness and that slowness in that flower thing. But your slowness and dullness, I'm sure, is different from Angshu's slowness and dullness. We all have like all movements look so different on different bodies. I want to see what your 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 did, like what you did, and then we'll see what the difference was. Yeah. So is this a sunflower painting? Is this a sunflower painting? Yes, mine was like not that slow, not that fast in between, and my head okay. was down looking at the floor. Okay, so let let's see Angshu and Sri Lakshmi do the movement together. Can you all do it together? Yeah. Mm. So anybody had a very dramatically different sunflower? You all keep doing it. Shri Lakshmi and Angshu, you all keep doing it. Sorry, just keep doing it. We just add one more. So anybody wants to show Nikhil, you want to show us your movement for the sunflower painting? But what did you? Where did you reach? Hmm. So Nikhil, Nikhil has a slightly more different movement addition to it. Anybody can tell tell me what what is the difference that they see in the? So there are three sunflower paintings that are being. drawn right now on the screen okay very different um anybody wants to tell me what they see okay uh, uh, uh yes elisa yeah. uh, angshu's is very flat and uh it's it's very dull mm. i would say it's a direct and then uh and sri lakshmi's is um It's pretty straight, but then uh, it's stiff, and then I would say dull. Mm, She's looking okay. down, and uh, Nikhil's is energetic, kind of mm. energetic and dull at the same time. Mm. Then, but that's interesting. Yeah, tell me. So I keep going. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's it. No, I was just thinking about how, like, even something like dull can become so many different layers and like uh, so much nuance to it the minute you start moving it, right? So, Sri Lakshmi, you can also pause. Sorry, and thank you, Nikhil. Also, you can pause. So, thank you for doing that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And um, like uh, the same kind of like dullness becomes. And do you think this dullness was relative to the other yellow, which was slightly brighter? I guess anybody wants to share. How how was it transitioning from the first yellow to the second? How did that feel? In the sunflower painting, I felt it had a flow. The start of start at the top of the painting was a bit happy, and as it came down, uh, it became getting a bit depressed, shocking and falling. Mm. Do you want to show us your movement, Kathy? Hmm. 
that's it that's very beautiful okay can we see nikhil uh, do his movement once more please so we can just see how khyati and nikhil's movements sit with next to each other yeah Mm. Okay, great. Okay, does anybody feel like they're closer to the way Khyati and Nikhil moved as compared to Angshu and Ray? Anybody else who you feel you were closer to Khyati and Nikhil's movement? I was closer to Nikhil's movement. Great. Let's see it, Anam, uh, uh, Atmika. Let's see. Mm. Very nice. Okay, great. So let's say we're going to divide us into two groups. Okay, so all the students who you feel now you have to make a judgment. Who are towards say Nikhil, um, Anamika, ah uh, sorry, Atmika and Khyati. Whoever you all feel are that, all of you all just can you all raise your hand? Okay, and then let's do it together. Okay, Minakshi, Ayati, Avinash, fantastic. So Minakshi, Avinash, uh, Ayati, Khyati, um, Nikhil, and um, Atmika, you all are all going to do the movement together. Okay, so just stand up and get ready. We're all going to see your performance of the sunflower. Yeah. Okay. Fantastic. Is everybody ready? Okay, great. Uh, so one, two, three. Let's begin. All of you do your um, yeah. The um, let's embody that painting together, and we we'll just see this together. Okay, now all of you, let's just look at uh, Minakshi's movement. And Minakshi, you're going to teach us your movement, okay? So everybody's going to do Minakshi's movement. Minakshi, can you teach us? Let's give give instructions, okay? Um, should I just show it? Uh, yeah, I, you I can just show it. That's okay. Yeah, just show it. And if there's anything specifically you want to say, you can say. But everybody's going to do hers, okay? Start. Let's do it. That's okay. Try as much as you can, whatever you can get. Okay. Now, Atmika, you can show us your movement, your original movement, your your movement. Yeah, great. And everybody, let's let's do uh, Atmika. So we're going to borrow Atmika's movement. Okay. Everybody's going to put it on their bodies. Exactly what Atmika is doing. Atmika, if you want to give us any instructions, you can do that. Yeah. Okay, fantastic. Now, everybody go back to your original movement, whatever was yours, okay? The one that you got. Mm. How does this feel in relation to what you were doing before this? Just notice, just notice your friend's sunflower and now your sunflower. What are the difference be between the two? How did your friend see the sunflower? How did you see it? Great. Okay, now Ayati is going to show us her movement. Can you teach us your movement, Ayati, please? Everybody does borrows Ayati's.
Hmm. How's Ayati's movement feeling in relation to what we were just doing before that? We were just doing our own and now we're doing Ayati's. What is Ayati's sunflower like? What was yours like? What are the differences? How did say Ayati read that painting? What did you read it as? Okay, and now we're going to go back to our original. Just our own, our own rhythms. Great. And then um, let's get Avinash's. Avinash's movement, if you want to tell us, give us any instruction, should we just follow you, looking at you, doing what you're doing? Okay. Okay. As closely as you can mimic Avinash, just mimic him as closely as you can, exactly what he's doing. See what Avinash's movement makes you feel like? Does it make you dizzy? Is it comfortable to do? Is it uneasy to do his movement? Was your movement easier? Great. And let's come back to our own now. For the last time. And we're going to see the difference between Avinash's movement and our own. Okay, fantastic. Okay, thank you so much, everyone. Does anybody want to share? Um, how did that feel? What were the differences between other people's? Is there anybody else's who's particularly enjoyed doing? Whose sunflower you enjoyed? Wants to share anything? I yeah, uh, this was pretty good. But what do you mean by good? Like what? Why, what did you enjoy uh, in it? Why did you enjoy it? Yeah, it was like free, very free, free, free bird. Mm. Okay. And do you think the um the, uh, the like the like your sunflower in between Ayati sunflower like what was the difference between your movement of becoming the sun the painting and her becoming the painting? What was the difference? Yeah. Generally, like what what was the difference in like the way you moved? Yeah. I don't know. Mine was pretty dizzy. Mm, dizzy. Like, okay. Like sleepwalking mm. type of thing. And Ayati's was like free. And, then... mm. and when you look at the Santla painting again, so I'm just going to show it to you again. Does it, does it feel like when you did that movement, is there anything you would change in that movement now? If you want, you can redo your movement, okay, Atmika, right now. Would you like to redo your movement in any way? Do you want to change something? Like maybe you learned something from all of your other friends' movement, something new about the painting, and now you want to change it. Do you want to change anything in your original movement? You can do one tweak, okay? So I'm allowing all of you all to do one tweaking if you want to change something. So all the five, um, five uh, students we saw right now, if you all had to change one thing in your movement, uh, you all can do it now. So, Atmika, you want to change something? Maybe you learned something from somebody else as you were doing their movement. You're like, oh, yeah, that, that, is, that is what the painting felt like. If that, like, movement happened or no. You, you, yeah, up to you. No? Um, yeah, okay. Okay, no problem. Anybody else? Anything they want to share about this collective sharing movement? Anything you want to expect? Any reflections anybody has? Even people who are watching? Avinash, uh, Manakshi, Khyati, Ayati, any, um, any reflections? Anything you enjoyed doing or anything you learned new as you were doing other people's? Or how did it feel like to do other people's things? Was it easy or hard? Was it just easier to do like your own? Avinash's movement. Mm, what did you like about it? Uh, it was like it was very free, and um, the way he like the way he made us um, you know here and there. I was feeling 
some the air was feeling that there's something here in my neck, in my neck or in my mm. hands and also in my neck. I was like falling down. Wow, that's beautiful. Yeah. Also, one thing to remember is we are all sitting in such different room layouts that one movement can work very well in a room which has like linear space, and then if you have like very tiny space, it looks very distorted in another space. So different movements will always look different in different rooms. Um. Okay. And um, Nikhil, any thoughts? Avinash's and Meenakshi's was a little bit better. Uh, they did. Uh, free it was very free and and it was, it was indirect sort of not mm. thing too much to do and when you look at this uh, van gogh painting does it feel like that like free and indirect how does it feel does it feel like that or yeah it feels like a combination of sadness and happiness so both of mm. those were pretty visible in the in their dances movements mm. okay and all the audiences so shri lakshmi angshu rebecca labano agnes how, how as you all were watching it did you all what did you all think any thoughts like every one of them did different movements and all of them looked very pretty also you know the outside one so i was thinking that I could do much better. Like the woman, I could do much better. Also. No, but um, yeah, I mean, I don't think there's any like better or worse or like. Um, but I guess just generally, um, if you thought it looked good, uh, the question is also just always in relation to this painting. Like it good, lo it looked good in that. Did you learn anything new about this painting? Did anybody learn anything new about this painting when you were watching all your other friends perform it? Anything new you saw about this painting that you didn't think about before when you first saw it, Manomi? Anything about this painting that you uh, kind of like learned from maybe Ayati or Atmika or um, Avinash's movement? Anything new you saw about this painting as they were doing it? You're like, oh yeah, the painting is like that. the vibrations the, the quick shifting or very controlled movement okay great so the other set of people whoever was not a part of that group let's just see you all perform now okay so we're just going to quickly see you all do the performance together so that's rebecca mega clemmy jenna agnes I want to just get up, just stand at the back, be ready, Angshu. Great. Okay, so let us now um, see Jenna's movement and try to do Jenna's movement. Okay, so everybody become Jenna's sunflower. Jenna sunflower. Just see how exactly as much as you can mimic her. Okay, how is the body moving? Is it slow? The smoothness, the flow in it. Is she putting a lot of effort? Is it very little effort? Okay, so we're becoming Jenna's movement. Now we're going to move to Agnes. So Agnes, can you show us your movement, please? Your original movement. Hmm. Okay, now after Agnes's, we're going to go back to Jenna's. So let's go back to Jenna's moment. You remember that movement? So we're trying to develop a sequence. Okay, so we had the first moment from Jenna. Now we got one from Agnes. So this is the first moment from Jenna. Now we're going to go to Agnes again. Okay, this is our second step, and then the third step is Rebecca is going to give us. Rebecca, how do we do this? Your movement. Hmm. So Rebecca's Rebecca sunflower. Rebecca's movement of that painting is like this. Okay. 
So that's us third. And from this, we can flow easily back to number one, which was Jenna's. Let's go back to Jenna, okay? So we're doing Jenna. Now we're doing step number two, which is Agnes's movement. Now we're going to Rebecca's movement. And then we'll do Angshu. Mm. Okay, so see how is the transitioning happening from that painting to Angshu's painting? What does the body have to do? Is it more tenser this time? Was the painting also as tense as this? Okay, now we'll see with Sri Lakshmi's movement. Okay, fantastic. Great. So now y'all can all come back. Let's just come back and reflect a little bit. Anybody wants to share anything? Angshu, Jenna, Sri Lakshmi. What did you enjoy doing? Wow. The first one and the third one had some connection. So it was more free. And then it was like more slower than faster. Like all the speeds were there. So it was mm. good. It's like a wave. Like it's going fast and slow, then fast and slow. Mm. And then it settles for a while. And just mm. I started uh, prancing a little bit uh, in the, while going back here. Because it shows a happier and a sadder side to both. Wow. Okay. Hmm. But I, I think what I was thinking is the, um, also when you look at this painting now, do you feel like uh, what Sri Lakshmi was saying that, you know, there were all sorts of speeds. Does everybody feel like everybody reads different? So we all kind of read different speed into it and, you know, doing everybody's movement together was... Um, maybe helped us see like, you know, how did, what speed we saw, because speed is also very relational. Like, you know, I could be very slow, but if somebody's even slower than me, then I become fast in relation to that. So sometimes that's the nice thing about movement practice that you can see a lot of people do it. And then you understand like as a collective, whether your reading of the painting was slow or fast, or like, you know, somebody's yellow is much faster than your yellow your yellow is slower or your your painting is faster or slower or heavier and that's why uh, doing other people's movements can give you a different perspective on how you position yourself okay so this, this can just be a useful exercise in maybe just finding your own pace or your own rhythm which is something that you should totally enjoy and there's no right or wrong but it is good to notice or know okay so um this is good and anybody else wants to share anything before we move forward um or backwards, I don't know. See, they are all uh, in their rooms, which they are. Uh, they have been for many, uh, many, maybe, uh, maybe years. Uh, they mm. are, so that, is that um, notion of that room, that space, that furniture, everything that is affecting their thought? Would we, would we? Hundred percent, absolutely. Huh? Yes, thank you, Das. Hundred percent, hundred percent. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, like I was saying, all of our movements are shaped by where we are, depending on, you know, what is the layout of your room, what is the material, what is the temperature, you're kind of doing things consciously or unconsciously based on, uh, so how you're reading this painting is actually also coming from the space that you're occupying. And the good thing about movement practices actually helps you see it explicitly, right? Because um, in different kinds of rooms, you can only move differently. And now, however you express this painting will depend on how much space there is or what kind of materials you'll hit or not hit or yeah so um, that is always true that depending on where we are situated the way we see the painting will change depending on where you're sitting with whom you're sitting with whom you're talking the way you see this painting and receive this painting or understand this painting or know this painting all of that is completely dependent on like you know the space that you are in Besides, like, you know, your own mental space, you could be having a horrible day, you could be having the best day of your life and that affects the way you are. Um, 100% seeing or feeling about yellow, you know, like 
um i used to love yellow and um maybe like you know now it reminds me of of like uh, this house that i didn't like very much which was painted yellow and now suddenly when i look at yellow it uh, i i will perform a very different yellow than ankshu will or shri lakshmi will and we all will perform different yellows because uh, it means different things to us so that also comes from the houses that we are living in and the rooms and all of that yeah one, one, one more thing um uh, uh... can they get over that um, uh, restriction or which they mm. it is it is in the mind can they get over it is it possible uh... i think becoming aware of it is uh, 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 uh. is very useful i and then that then gives you a choice whether you want to still follow it or not but um, awareness it gives you movement practice gives you awareness of uh, this kind of bias sometimes yeah mm. so Great. Anybody has any other thoughts, questions, comments? Because this through this question we can transition easily to the second part. Now, what we're going to do now is we're going to identify any one material in our room, okay? And we're going to go to that material and we're going to touch it, okay? Just close your eyes and touch that material for a few seconds and just try to know that material as much as you can what is the temperature how does it feel the texture everything okay so just try to become that material as much as you can so i'm going to first leave you all so leave leave this uh, computer screen and just go to whatever material you want to go to walk as far as you want or as close as you want and just touch that material and close your eyes and just notice that material as much as you can the texture temperature color what is how does it make you feel in your body um, you know like if it's a very cold is it metallic and you're feeling uncomfortable but you want to get rid of it you want to keep holding it okay so let's just do this material exercise okay okay so all of us we're just going to with our hands okay we just just keep sitting close your eyes and um, just try to embody that the temperature of that material okay only the temperature whatever temperature you remember just try to become the temperature of the material but you have to only do it sitting okay Okay, now let's try to embody the texture of that material. The texture, okay, only sitting. So you can you can use your hand, you can use your head, you can use the whole of your top portion of your body, however you want to, because we're sitting. But we need to embody the texture of that material. Okay, what is the speed of that material? The texture of that material. Was it moving very fast? Was it moving very slowly? Is it unidirectional? Is it very direct? What is the texture of that material? It just become the movement of that material, the texture of it. Okay, it's so very like shiny and soft and sharp. Okay, now let's try to become the color of that material. If you remember the color, okay, so the color of that material. okay now we're going to become the whole of that material okay so in the top part of the body we're just going to become the whole of that material as much as you can okay good now we're all going to stand up from our chairs and whatever movement you were doing just remember it but transfer it to your hand okay so do the same movement but only with your hand the essence of the movement is the same what you were doing right now sitting but now just stand up and do it with your hand okay so i want only the hands of your body to embody the same movement that you were just doing but we're going to now do it only through our hands
Now we're going to slowly move it to our waist. So let's see the same movement, but only through our waist. How would the waist do the same movement? Okay. Okay, now we're going to move to our feet. So we're going to do the same movement with our feet. Okay, try to get as close as you can possibly to performing the same movement with your feet. Okay, so the same movement that we move from our head to our hands, waist. Now it goes to the feet. Only the feet have to do the same movement. What is happening to the feet? Is this easier? Is it harder? Are you falling down? Can you still stand? Great. And then we're now going to move to the head. Okay. So let's just do it with our head. The same movement, but only with our head. Okay, and now we're going to move to the whole body. Okay, so we're going to use our whole body to become this material. The same movement, but with our whole body. Now we can use the whole body. Okay, now I want you to use the room that you are in. So the space that you are in right now, okay? Make the most use of it and embody that material. So see which corners of the room you can go to to explore this. Will you sit? Will you stand up on the bed? Make the most of the space that you are in to communicate that texture of the material, okay? So now we're going to move our bodies from one static location. We're going to move around. We're going to use every corner. You want to touch the ceiling, the floor, the edges. I want to, you to make your, your rooms a part of your performance, okay? So see, your room, see the room as an extension of your body, as if it's your body part, okay? So how can you explore it with your hands, your feet, your head, your waist, folding in out of the space to become the texture of that material, okay? So I'm seeing you and your rooms as one element now. You all are one, okay? If there's a chair... Are you moving a chair around? Are you moving inside the chair, under the chair, above the chair? Are there different materials? Are there different walls that you're going to touch and, you know, go under and above? How can you use every element of your room so that it becomes a part of your, of the material that you're becoming right now? Your body, your room, everything together is becoming that material. You're all one now, okay? There's no separation. Is there any part of the room you haven't been to in a very long time that you want to go to? Any corner, any objects that you want to bring closer to your body because you think it will help you? 
do you want to add add weight to your body hold certain books or items so that your movements become heavier you can use anything in your room now are there windows that you want to open or touch and whenever you're ready you can come back to your body so now we're coming back to only our body and we're leaving the room behind okay no don't come back to the screen just come back to your body just come back to your body we're not we're just leaving the room you are you're still in the movement you're still standing you're still doing the movement with your whole body okay and slowly we're going back only to our feet only to doing the movement with our feet with our waist with our hands okay and now we're coming back to our seat and going back to the movement we started with so you can come back now yeah slowly we can exhale and pause yeah great how did that feel anybody wants to share anything i can ask specific question but first just share anything on your head and then yeah anything you want to say it can be anything agnes it was so relaxing mm. i felt so relaxed after doing this very good nice which part do you enjoy doing or yeah how was the, the last room? part where i go around the room every corner i touched so it was so relaxing mm. and which material did you start with agnes one material which one like which material did i touched the peacock feather mm can you show us your movement of like this is the one that you were sitting and doing yeah yeah it is like this so okay smooth. mm Okay, and how? What happened to this movement when you did it with the room, the last one? So my whole body was moving, and I mm -hmm. could feel that. Like I, I, I'm a peacock feather. I felt mm -hmm. like that. So yeah. Can you show us how 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 the room became you? Can you show us the last one? Just if that's possible, yeah. Mm. Very beautiful. And how do you think about the room, um, Agnes? You think the room helped you when you were doing the room exercise with the room? How is that different from doing it as like one individual in body in the room? How is that different? What is the difference? I think uh, it was uh, more relaxing uh, while doing with the room. Mm. So we can go to each corner by by sitting. It's like you know, uh, it's not that much. We are not that much free. Mm. So I felt it was mm. good with doing with the room. Mm, that's nice. So because you wanted to like about the peacock feather, you thought it was very smooth and uh, flowy. Yeah. It was important that you. felt less restricted and i think the the room uh, kind of provocation allowed you to yeah move all around even more yeah. uh, more free because that is what your material was about okay very nice and do you think uh, as you were doing that do you think you notice anything new about your room like would you look at your room differently mm. now anything not that much okay great theek hai yeah Cool. And did you notice any other material in your room which is similar, like as soft as the peacock feather or something? 
did you as you were moving did you feel like you could go easily to certain materials and other materials were slightly more dangerous to go to kind of yeah the dresses that were hanging over were so uh, good to touch but not mm-hmm. much like chairs or like that mm-hmm. things that's beautiful because then you're finding the association in your space with that material so it's kind of like certain material you know your performance could maybe then be closer to that versus the other material and you're using that in your uh, expression yeah mm-hmm. very nice thank you agnes for sharing that yeah this material yeah my bottle uh it uh, her her moment was very uh, rugged in a rugged way mm. uh, her moment you want to show us khati which which body part do you think it worked with the most like which one do you think felt most right or was there a combination of some or yeah i felt the most appropriate was my leg mm do you want to show it yeah Hmm. And how is the doing the movement? How does it make you feel about the bottle? What do you think about the bottle now? Now that you've done this, the bottle is very rigid, strong, but uh, I felt the bottle in a way cute. Hmm. Very nice. And what happened when you did the room room version, where the whole room you had to use? What did it become? Rigid. Felt rigid. Can you show us that? How did you? What did you? How did you use the room? Same which I showed just now was with the room. Okay. 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 Nice. Um. Okay. So you didn't change anything as you were doing this movement. Even with the room used, you were doing the same movement. Okay. Elisa you was you wanted to say something you raise your hand uh in the room uh i felt that it is uh it is a little bit hard in the thighs because my movement included a lot of the leg yeah so yeah i felt like uh it was a little bit strong on the thighs felt nice so what material was yours elisa sorry i missed that uh it is a pillow uh, so, sorry it was a pillow it was a pillow okay okay mm and you feel like your thighs and the pillow had some connection yeah uh not much but then the pillow was in dust in a long while so there was dust on the pillow mm. so i felt like it became rough so yeah okay that's very nice for some reason i can't see, see you elisa i don't know if it's my computer is your okay fantastic thank you so can you show us the movement please whichever one you want to up to you yeah mm And what did this movement become when you had to do it with the whole room, with the whole room exercise? How did that become? I just went around the room. Can you see it? Hmm. So were you always moving? Uh, so, ah, uh, charm. With so that people could see you on Zoom, or did you try any other direction? Because I know direct movement is very like this. Did you also try other directions? Yes, there you is. did. I mean, that's okay. You, if you can't show it to us, that's fine. But you did do it. Okay. Hmm. Yeah. So that's a restriction of the Zoom screen that um, we're doing something very three dimensional, and somehow we have to still sit within the frame. But that's okay. You don't let it um, affect your movement. You can still do it. It's okay if we can't see it. Yeah. Okay, and uh, what happened when you did it with the room? Did it like? Did you learn anything new about the pillow when you did it with the room, the whole room together? Uh, 
not really. It just it, uh, I walk behind the door. Mm. So I I feel like I don't go that much. So yeah. Okay, that's very nice. And do you think it was useful to have the room as a part of the performance, or you think your body was enough? You didn't need the room to become the pillow, or do you do you think it was useful in terms of becoming the pillow? Yeah. Uh, the room probably uh, because the pillow is square. Hmm. Square, so felt more like a pillow. That's mm. okay. Nice. Anybody has any thoughts on what Elisa has just shared, or something that you noticed in your work as well that you want to share with us? Well, mine was similar to Elisa because um, I took the material as a cloth, a, a mask. So mm. it was similar like uh, I went all around the room taking uh, a pillow because it also mm. felt the same, mm. same moments like mm. with hands and that's it. That's nice. I saw you doing something with the curtain when you had to use the room. Yes, tell us more yeah, about it, that. It also felt like the mask, uh, the same mm. material, so same mm. feeling like being the cloth. Mm. Yes. Yeah. That's... that's very nice. And does anybody notice anything about like scaling up? No. So you're doing something with your hand, and suddenly I asked you to do it with your whole body. So what was that? How was that? Changing of like size of from doing from here to the whole body has to kind of do that. How was that? Yeah, when I was doing with my feet, I had some little problems because I was uh, losing my balance. Mm. Also, but when it came to building, um, it's I can use my whole body and move around, right? So it was more mm. comfortable. Okay, great. Um, anybody else? Thank you, Avinash. Anybody else wants to share anything? Yeah, so I took something hard because you know everybody started thinking of socks. So I just mm. took this book. This is kind mm. of hard. So basically, I could connect to my whole room because everything is hard here, mm. except the bed. Okay, everything is nice. hard. The wall wow. is hard. The door is hard. The table is hard. The laptop is hard. So I could relate to everything. Mm, that's amazing. And uh, so you related to it, and then what movement did you do? Like, did you touch the surfaces? Did you like? What was your yeah. body reaction? Yeah, I took the book with me itself. Mm. I don't know why. I just took it with me, and then I was touching everything in the hardest way. Mm. And also, I kept on with the temperature because uh, the room is it's rainy season in Kerala, so we had the you know the book and I had the same temperature. Mm. So it was great. Thank you, Sri Lakshmi. That was very um, beautiful to understand in here uh, about temperatures and materials and how like certain rooms have certain qualities, and then movement practice can kind of help you see that more um, in some ways. So it is a good exercise to kind of whenever you go to a new space to kind of notice if um, yeah, like you know, just move differently in it, and you'll be able to get more sense of what is the uh, quality of that space. So. Yeah. Ma'am, I would thank you because today is the first day. I'm literally feeling that my room is very hard. <laughs> yeah, is that a good thing or a bad thing? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if it's a good thing or a bad thing, but yeah, yeah I realize it now. Okay, that's great. Yeah, but also maybe yeah. I mean, when you go to new spaces, you should try again seeing what that is and. If you want to shift it, that you can sometimes also shift it through a movement. You know, like you can you can kind of like move differently, and sometimes the quality start to shift as well. There's a there's a very direct link between uh, your body and the space that you're occupying. So you can always kind of exchange differently. Okay, thank you. Anybody wants to share anything else? Ah uh, yes, I felt and experienced the room in different ways. Mm. So when I felt, so when I was going in the hard movement. Like I felt the thing; it just got duller, and uh, lighter movements is a little bit brighter color, and mm. also continuous movement allows me to see the details more. Sudden movement doesn't allow me see to see the details. Mm. So that's very like beautiful. Yeah, showing me details. Yeah, that's such a good point. It's like when you're running to catch your school bus that you're anyways going to miss. Uh, you don't look at who's on your left and your right, so you're going to miss out on all the details of the street, right? But uh, yeah, if you're sitting in the garden and you're much more slower, you're noticing the smallest of grass and the corner of that, uh, you know, uh, leaf and those kind of things. So yeah, that's very nice. So maybe every now and then you should kind of like 
slow down in the room and speed up to see how the room is changing and that could be good to um to see yeah um thank you angshu that's very nice to hear and know shivani one more Hi. yes so yes uh, uh, is there would there be <laughs> i don't know whether i'm talking out of context would this room rearrangement of rooms uh, on a uh constant uh, periodic basis would that help uh, 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 these people there so mr lakshmi was saying she is uh, your room may be arranged in different in a particular way on the left hand uh, corner there may be a table chair etc would that uh, periodic rearrangement of the room aff uh, affect this uh, their uh, perception and uh, mm. I, i'm asking whether yeah 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 um she lakshmi what do you think uh do you think so i mean i know the question is to me and i'm just transferring it to you i'll answer but i also want to know what you think because you did the exercise so yeah. yeah um maybe it might change but i don't think the hardness is ever you know thought like in my mind because i was not in this room just mm. before some time i just shifted here mm. and yeah it just makes me think logically things that's it. Mm. yeah <laughs> i think that's um it it uh, like a rearrangement um yes that can also change but also uh, depending on how shri lakshmi is kind of feeling or like you know um her own internal kind of state also affects whether it's very hard or not so it's like two way uh, so yes definitely arrangements any composition we change if i change the uh, painting that we saw today and uh, maybe you know moved all of these flowers at the bottom to the top or um, the top flowers to the bottom and i move the pot and turned it upside down on the top 100% uh, you all would perform a very different uh, painting so yeah anything that we um, like once the composition shifts hard soft everything in direct and direct everything kind of changes so yes i think that'll happen that yeah so when if we can happy to just add that uh, how does this affect the, the public space Like uh, yes. How does it affect the? Sorry. Yeah, how does it how affect does the, the? How does the activity which is going to happen in the public space affect that design, or how do you look at it? Like the fish market, how do you design? Mm. The auditorium, how do you design? And the museum, you know. Yeah. So just uh, yeah. I know it's a huge topic, but just two minutes. So. Yeah. 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 No. Um. So definitely, there's like a direct implication of this, and then there is an indirect one. So directly is like this that. depending on like for example um spaces where people move very fast it is quite intuitively that you would want to choose um you know materials where even if people did collide they don't really hit each other or like basically you can use all of the whole direct indirect and smooth and you know sustained and those kind of um qualities as ways to then think about okay what kind of space do i want to make for this kind of movement or so they basically there's always an exchange um I don't know if there's like a direct answer, but I would just encourage you to go to marketplaces, to go to public spaces, to go to bus depots, to go to uh, the flower seller or the garden or um, you know any public space that you can think of, or, or the school corridors or the school library. All the spaces where a lot of people are found. Just notice uh, how the physical quality of that space, like what is the quality of that space, and see if you can move differently. and different qualities of that space emerge you know you can always do these exercises anywhere you can do like a sudden you can start do a very slow movement in the library in a very sudden movement and just see um if you wanted to change this uh you know space how can you kind of do it with basically the body will kind of help you learn a little more about the space and then that knowledge you can translate into directly architectural design or um yeah just as performance practice as well you can also just stay as that and i really really enjoyed meeting all of you all and um, i learned a lot from all of your reflections very very beautiful uh, ways of seeing and being and doing and just use this as like a starting point to explore different possibilities and yeah just just enjoy